Good day to you. Praise the Lord. Every week we seek the Lord for the timely revelation in the Word to be released to you. So this is what the Lord is saying to all of us for this week. For many of my people, the enemy has been trying to cause them to lose their way and lose their direction in life. But I am telling you, this is a lie of the enemy. I am still your good shepherd and I am still your guiding light in times of need. I hold the keys to your doors and I hold the keys to your breakthroughs. Look to me, hear my voice and follow me and I will show you the way to your open doors and breakthroughs. So beloved of God, this is going to be a very pastoral message, a message that's going to minister to many of you, especially if you have lost your way or you have lost your purpose in life, you have lost your direction in life, especially in this prolonged pandemic. But the Lord has his words of encouragement for you. So if you have lost your way, lost your purpose, lost your vision, lost even your direction in life, the Lord has this encouragement today for you. So I go all the way to Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 4 first, the parable of the lost sheep. Now you are the sheep and he is the shepherd. In verse 1, it says here, Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to Jesus to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained. These are those who are holier than thou, people who are self-righteous. So they were saying, this man, Jesus, receives sinners and eats with them. In other words, Jesus was receiving them and fellowshipping with them. To eat with them is to fellowship with them. So these Pharisees and scribes were complaining about this. So Jesus spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? So even though Jesus was talking about the lost sheep of Israel those days, the godless, the secularized people compared to the righteous, noble people. But this message is for you too. This message is for whoever who is lost. You see, Jesus could have just said that, nah, just one of those sheep out of the hundred, ninety-nine is saved, and one is lost. Just let it be. No. But Jesus is a very personal God. Jesus cares for you. Jesus loves you. Even if there's one who is lost, whether lost in this world or lost in direction, lost in purpose, lost in their way, or lost in the woods and cannot find their way, Jesus cares for you. Jesus will find you. Jesus will look for that lost sheep. So if any one of you, you feel so lost, especially in this time of prolonged pandemic prolonged lockdown for some places take heart because jesus is the same yesterday today and forever he is still the same good shepherd now what is the definition of lost here in luke 15 verse 4 now the word lost here is opolumi in greek it means perishing being lost being destroyed being dead so you see, it's a very strong word. So it's not just getting lost in the woods or unable to find one's way or one's direction, but it's also about being lost, perish, destroyed, dead. Maybe your life is like that now too. Maybe you have lost your purpose. Maybe you felt that your vision is dead, perishing, destroyed, buried. Now, this word apolumi is from two words, apo and olumi. Now, apo means cease, depart, gone, separate, away, off. It means all your purposes in life, your vision in life, your direction in life is lost, gone, 
ceased. But I want to tell you something, that the good work that God has begun in you, beloved, it shall not be aborted. God is going to bring it to full completion. That's in Philippians 1, verse 6. Now, how about Olumi here? It speaks of death, destruction, ruined. Now, that's what the enemy wants you to be, ruined, destroyed. Because in John 10.10, 10, it says that the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy your life. But you know what? John 10.10 10 also says that Jesus comes so that you may have life and life more abundantly. Amen? So I want to just believe for you, wherever you are watching right now, that yes, even if the thief, the devil tries to steal, kill and destroy your life, your vision in life, your purpose in life. But Jesus is here right now. Jesus is right now visiting you in your room right now, wherever you are right now. And Jesus says, I will give you life and life more abundantly. Receive this. Receive this assurance. Amen. I continue Luke 15 verse 5 to 7 with the same parable of the lost sheep. Now what happens? And when the shepherd, he has found it, he lays that lost sheep on his shoulders, rejoicing. You see, on his shoulders, the shepherd is carrying all your burdens on his shoulders. So let him, beloved. And when the shepherd comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Apol Lumi. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just or upright persons who need no repentance. Now you see the shepherd is of course Jesus, a picture of Jesus and the lost is a picture of a sinner or in our context here not just a sinner who needs repentance but also someone who is lost in this world lost purpose lost vision lost direction lost in the woods with no way no light at the end of the tunnel and you know what when the shepherd comes home with the lost sheep he is rejoicing and in fact he is calling together his friends and neighbors who are these friends and neighbors these are pictures of angels rejoicing together with jesus in heaven if there's any area in your life that you feel lost the lord is here to embrace you allow him to carry you allow him to lay yourself on his shoulders so that he can bring you home so that he can bring you back to his purpose in your life so that he can bring you back to his vision for your life so that he can bring you back to his direction to his calling in your life amen and even if you are lost in sins i want to tell you something the good news here is it's not too late to return to jesus it's not too late to return to his embrace just as james chapter 4 verse 8 says draw near to him and he will draw near to you cleanse your hands sinners and purify your hearts you double-minded it means those who got mixed between the world and god so whatever your situation may be beloved if you are lost whether lost in sins lost in your purpose, lost in your way, lost in your vision, lost in your calling, lost in your direction, in any area that you are lost. Today is the day that God is going to cause you to find it again. Find your way again. Find your purpose again. Find your direction again. Find your vision again. I pray this for you. Now, I fully understand what some of you have been going through because I have gone through that before in the past. 
But that was the time I just came back to my room. I just knelt down before the Lord. I just cried out to God. I said, God, if you are the true and living God, if you are real, show me your way. Show me your glory. Show me how real you are. Lord, open the way for me. Lord, open the way for my breakthrough. Lord, clear the way for me. Now, God answered my prayers. Now, I want to believe that God is going to answer your prayer as well. Even as you look to Jesus and hear Him and even cry out to Him, and He will know how to answer you. Now, you are the sheep and Jesus is the shepherd. The sheep hears the shepherd's voice. John 10 verse 1 to 4 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. You see, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Do you notice here? Jesus calls you by name. It means He knows you. He knows you even before you are born. He knows you when you are in your mother's womb. He already has a purpose for your life even by then. He calls you by name. He knows your name. He cares for you. In every situation you are going through, He cares for you. Why? Because He's a personal God. And when He brings out His own sheep, He goes before them. And the sheep follow Him, for they know His voice. What an assurance of our Good Shepherd's words for us today. So, beloved of God, no matter what you have been going through, fear not. Don't be afraid. Yes, the world may work this way. The world may dump you when you are deemed to be useless. The world may dump you or even retrench you if you are under employment when you are not as useful anymore to your employer. But you check it out here in John 10, verse 11 to 14. The shepherd knows you. The shepherd knows his sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. But I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. I know my sheep and am known by my own. So as I've said just now, the world may dump you. The world may sideline you. Your employer may retrench you. Your customers may dump you when they find another better source. But your good shepherd will never dump you. Your good shepherd will never sideline you. Because God loves you, God cares for you like none other, like no one else on earth. He is not a hireling. When danger comes, the hireling will go away, flee, run away. But the Good Shepherd, Jesus is here for you. And Jesus died for you on the cross. Jesus laid down His life for you. So look to what Jesus has done on the cross. God hasn't forgotten nor forsaken you. And know this, He doesn't treat you like an impersonal robot or machine to be dumped when you become useless or incapable. No way. But He is a God who has deep compassion for His sheep, for you and I. So take heart and be encouraged today. 
So I read from Matthew 9, verse 35 to 36. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. So have you been weary? Have you been tired? Have you been tired of whatever that's happening around your life? Maybe you never see your breakthrough yet. Maybe you have been praying, but the door has not been opened yet. Well, whatever weariness you may be experiencing at this moment, the Lord is here to lift your burdens away. And the Lord is here to refresh and to renew you. In fact, Jesus said this in Matthew 11, verse 28 to verse 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So allow Jesus to carry all your burdens away. Cast all your cares to Jesus. Cast all your cares to Him. Cast all your burdens to Him right now. For He is the Lord who cares for you. Let me continue with Luke 15. Now, the parable of the lost coin. Just now was the parable of the lost sheep. See the word lost again? So this one is the parable of the lost coin. Verse 8 to verse 10. Or oh, what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Now, even though Jesus was talking here about a sinner who repents and the angels rejoicing when the loss is found. But I want to tell you something here. There's something that I want to point out here. Why did Jesus actually talk about this lost coin? Now, just now was a lost sheep. I've explained to you and I've also cross-referenced to John chapter 10. But why did Jesus say lost coin here? Now, do you know that every coin has image? Now, it speaks of your lost image, you see, a lost image. The enemy tries to contaminate or destroy your image in Christ, or your self-worth, or your identity, or of course your purpose or vision in life. Now, maybe you are going through a time of lost identity, and you don't even know yourself anymore. Speaking of lost image, but God loves you. And he is here to restore your image in him again. He is here to restore your self-worth again. He is here to restore your identity again, bringing his original purpose and destiny back to you again. And, and I was studying this parable of lost coin here in the past week. And that's what the Lord was speaking to me. No, it's not just about the loss, the sinners repenting. Yes, even though that's the main context. But I want to bring you this revelation here. Lost coin, lost image. Every coin has an image. And if you have been feeling that you have lost your image, lost your identity, you don't even know who you are anymore. But God has a good news for you. God can restore your image in Him again. God can restore your identity in Him again. 
Now, the next slide here in Psalm 119, verse 103 to 105. So not only God is your good shepherd, God is also your guiding light. And that's what the Lord has spoken just now. A lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Now, it says, how sweet are your words to my taste, the psalmist says. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word precepts here is pikut in Hebrew. It can mean commands, it can mean instructions, but it can also mean this, appointed words. It means through your appointed words, I understand. And through your appointed recitations, I understand. I understand better who you are and who I am in you. So for this message today, the Lord has this appointment with you. The Lord has this appointed words for you. And I pray that the Lord is visiting you and the Lord will visit you and to show you the way, the direction in your life, your identity, even your self-worth, whatever that have been lost. Now remember, today the topic here is lost. Whatever that you have lost, the Lord will know how to restore. The Lord will know how to renew. The Lord will know how to refresh you. Amen. John 8 verse 12 says this, Then Jesus spoke to them to the people around him, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. In other words, you will not be lost anymore. You will not be like the spiritual blind that cannot see. Now, the background of John 8 here is the scribes and the Pharisees at that time brought to Jesus a woman caught in adultery. But as Jesus was scribbling on the ground, probably he was scribbling the names of all these scribes and Pharisees and listed down their sins. And one by one, from the oldest, one by one, just left. Jesus then actually spoke to this woman who was caught in adultery. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And that's when Jesus was saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. Now, when this woman has experienced this touch of Jesus, this divine touch of Jesus, the love of Jesus, do you think she will continue to sin further? I don't think so. So light here expresses God's great love for us. His light, the light of the world, guides us from the gloom of sin and make a way out of your sins. And His light also guides us in the midst of this gloom that's in the world at the moment. So I pray that you will walk in His light. You will find the bright path, even to your open doors and breakthroughs. So beloved of God, as the Lord Jesus shine on you, let us walk in that light. Let us walk in that bright path that He has set for you. May the Lord touch you with His divine love today. And may the Lord touch you and clear the way for you and shine the light for you. It's like you are in a dark room and Jesus just switch on the light and there's light. When there's light, you begin to see many things that you couldn't see before. You begin to see your purpose again. You begin to see your direction again. You begin to see your God-given vision again. And you begin to see who you are in Christ again, your identity in Christ. And you begin to walk in it. May the Lord touch you. May the Lord switch on this light for you and visit you right now. And let me pray for you today. Oh Lord, the enemy may be trying to cause your beloved to lose their way and even lose their direction in life. But you, O oh Lord, 
are our good shepherd and our guiding light in times of need and even in times like this. Indeed, you hold the keys to our open doors and you hold the keys to our breakthroughs. We look to you, we hear your voice as your sheep and we follow you with all our hearts. We know you will show the way to each of your beloveds, open doors and breakthroughs, whatever the situation may be in their lives at the moment. In the name of Jesus, Amen. So this is my message today. And I know it's a very pastoral message. And I know that God wants many of you to just receive this assurance of all that He has appointed in His Word for you today. And Lord God, I want to just believe for all who are watching today that God, they will find back whatever that have been lost in their lives. And I want to just pray for them as well, that they will begin to walk into their open doors and they will begin to walk into their breakthroughs, whatever their situation may be. There's nothing that is too difficult for Jesus. So, beloved of God, thank you for watching. Have a great day and be blessed in the Lord. Amen. Thank you.